Hello everyone, it's Karen at the Cool Tool Studio. Today we're going to be using resin alongside precious metal clay to make these lightweight, colorful earrings. Cool Tools is always expanding their library of textures and they just released these new jewelry artist elements that have these really kind of defined lines and then areas for filling in. Um, they have kind of botanicals, some birds, um, I think some succulents, and then uh, lots of insects, specifically kind of butterflies and moths, and that's what we're going to be working with today. In addition to one of those jewelry artist element texture tiles, you're going to need a work surface, some precision hole punches, tough cards, a scalpel, a mini palette knife, a clay roller, a hot plate, and a clay thickness rolling frame. Today, I'm only working with three cards thickness some Easy 960 lump and syringe clay, a wick way with a brush, and some cool slip. This is a great project for beginners because we don't need a lot of tools to get started. So today I'm going to be treating this texture tile kind of like a um, delicate element or a finishing touches mold. And you could use a clay scraper, but I'm just going to present another option today as well. Um, using your mini palette knife, you're going to press the clay down into and then scrape off. So I'm pushing down in filling the whole piece. And then I'm going to bring the palette knife up on its side and use this edge to scrape away the excess. All right. So again, hardly any clay used here. Um, it's gonna be a super lightweight piece and a pretty simple way to get started. So I've got my clay in this low area and I'm gonna take it off to the heat to dry. You can either use a hot plate or a dehydrator, but you do wanna dry it with heat because that's gonna give the clay a little bit of extra flexibility to help it get out without breaking. So while my butterfly element is drying, I'm gonna go ahead and make some jump rings to hang it by. So I'm going to prep my work surface and my roller with cool slip. And just one pump is plenty for both my work surface and my roller. And today I'm going to be rolling to three cards thickness. And I'm just going to roll out a sheet. So now I'm going to transfer my sheet to a tough card so I'm not cutting on the surface that I want to keep nice and smooth for rolling my clay. And I'm going to cut some jump rings. For making these jump rings, I use a larger punch to cut the outside wall and then a smaller punch to cut the inside wall. And I've got this six millimeter um, kind of minty green that I'm starting with. And then I'm going to make a couple with this pink, um, see if that looks thick enough. And if not, I'm going to make some blues as well. Uh, this is one of those things that when I'm doing it, I kind of will build up a library and make several at once. So again, a little more cool slip to dip my punches in. Starting off with this green outside wall. Got kind of stuck. Must be time for a little more cool slip, huh? So now I'm going to remove this excess clay here and try to leave my circles behind. I usually we'll just kind of poke them from behind with a damp brush if they want to tag along. And now I'm going to be punching out the interior circle. So again, I'm going to start with this pink, which is going to make a very thin jump ring. And I'll kind of eyeball it and try to look at it from not just behind, but sort of above and side to side to see if it's looking center-ish. And then I'll use my finger to kind of tap it off. And that's a very thin jump ring. And if it ever kind of distorts, I'll just take a damp brush again and kind of nudge. So now we're going to move to um, the blue and see if that gives us a little thicker wall. All right, 
that looks good. So I'm gonna just make a couple more like this and then I'm going to also allow these to dry. So my piece is ready to be popped out and I can tell it's dry and ready to go because it's already um, kind of just peeling out on its own. This was just sitting on the hot plate. I haven't tried peeling it out or anything. It just kind of pops as it dries. So I know it's good to go. And for popping these out, there's two ways you can do it. You can kind of flip it upside down. Um, but I usually will just take my brush kind of dry and I'll wiggle from one direction, uh, wiggle from another direction, and just kind of coax it out. Um, I think sometimes uh, asking it to kind of pop all, all at once is a little, um, I don't know, uh, maybe like shocking. It, um, it helps to kind of loosen it before you just pull it out on something that has this delicate. So I've worked my way around, so now we're coming across. And then I usually have a tough card ready. Here he is. And we'll flip. So there's my butterfly element. And I've got my jump rings dry and ready to go too. And um, at this point, you kind of get to make a decision. Um, does he get to keep his antennas? I think that kind of depends upon um, how you're hanging him. So for these butterflies, I had him um, hanging from the side, so I thought I'd leave the antenna. Um, here's another example. The antennas were kind of split and kind of offered a good opportunity to kind of add a jump ring in there. Um, but for the one that I'm showing today, uh, the antennas were kind of in the way <laughs> and they weren't super noticeable. Um, but I just figured I'd show also hanging this kind of butterfly from the middle instead of on the side. And in that case, I removed the antennas. And I've got my scalpel here. Just because I didn't like the way that um, the jump ring kind of looked over the antennas and attached to. So this poor butterfly, he's losing them. So I just kind of cut, gently cut that off. And then at this point, I usually will kind of pick up the butterfly and lay it on top of the jump ring to decide how much of it I want, how much am I cutting off. And kind of gently plan the positioning this way. And then I'll put my finger down to keep everybody in place. And I'm using that scalpel to trim the jump ring to size. So for this connection, I'm gonna use a bit of syringe and I've got a damp brush and I'm just running it along this top edge. And then taking my syringe, or my jump ring rather. So I'm just putting a little bit of syringe on the ends here and that's just going to give me a little more material to connect these two pieces because this tiny little end here isn't that much surface to make a nice strong connection with. And then I usually just kind of drop it on my work surface, scoot it generally in the right direction, and then I bring my butterfly to it. And kind of just push it in. And then I'm going to use my damp brush to blend out that syringe and solidify that connection. All right, so that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna take it to the heat to dry, and then at that point, flip it over, um, see if there's enough syringe on the back or if there's any gaps that you need to fill as well at that point. But usually this is good to go. When your piece is completely dry, you're ready to fire it. And since I'm working with EZ960 today, I'm going to be firing on a hard ceramic kiln shelf. And I'll usually just take my piece on my tough card straight from the heat and slide them right on. Since these pieces are really delicate, um, at this point, I'm not going to do any refining or sanding or anything like that because I just run the risk of breaking them. So once they're fired, 
they'll be more stable and we'll work on them some then. I'm gonna be firing this piece at 1675 for two hours. So I have another sample that I prepped ahead of time that's been fired and there wasn't really any cleanup to do really. Um, I just hit it really quickly with a radial bristle brush on my flex shaft, um, but you could also kind of bring a little bit of shine to your pieces using a brass brush. But when you're happy with the service, we're ready to apply some resin. So let's take a look at what we need for that. For the resin portion of this project, I'm gonna be using some UV resin and then a UV resin curing lamp. Um, there's this really awesome set of carving tools that Cool Tools sells. Um, love them for that, but today I'm gonna to be using the kind of um, subtly pointed, um, kind of rounded end tool here to scoop and distribute resin. It works really well for that. I've got some mixing cups, a mini palette knife, something to burnish with, and some resin dyes. I'm also gonna be working with some um, packing tape. So I have a piece of tape sticky side up here on my table, and I'm going to place my butterfly flat side down onto that tape. And I usually kind of initially tap everywhere. And then I've got a burnisher, um, and I'm just gonna run it over my piece. And what I'm doing here is I'm making sure that um, the silver is in full contact with the tape below it because the last thing you want is for there to be a gap between the butterfly element and the tape and for all your resin to leak out. So spend a couple minutes here making sure it's really properly put down and it will save you a good bit of trouble later. So usually after I've done a bit, I'll flip it over and kind of check. Um, you can sort of see uh, the places where it's burnished down really well. Um, and if it doesn't look like it's laying down super well, I'll actually flip it and burnish from this side as well. And you can see how it looks almost like more gray um, once it's fully adhered. And that's what you're looking for for the entirety of your piece. And a really nice good seal on this. Before we mix up our resin, just a friendly reminder to protect yourself from resin using both a respirator mask and some gloves. So I'm gonna pop both of these on. So I've got some little mini mixing cups here. And then I've got this UV resin. And since I'm um, not working in sunlight or an environment that's gonna cause my resin to cure, I can mix up all three of these colors at once and not have to worry about a limited work time. So I'm gonna do um, some purples and blues today. I've got sapphire blue. And these are very pigmented. Um, just a drop goes a long way, so I'll usually start with just that. Um, kind of mix it up, see how it's looking, and decide if I want to add more. Now I'm going to do a purple. And I'm just mixing these until I don't see streaks anymore, until it's one solid color. And then finally, I'm gonna mix up some sky blue. And I just um, like working with two or three colors. Um, I think three is easiest to plan because you don't have to worry about um, colors being right next to each other, if that's gonna bother you. Um, three seems to give you plenty of room to kind of play, but you could use as many colors as you like. I moved my piece to a tough card here, um, just again to make it easy to move to the UV lamp, um, but also the resin can cure on these tough cards and you can pop it right off. Um, so it's a great work surface for resin too. So I'm gonna start off with this purple and I'm just kind of scooping some up and then placing. And I really like this method um, because it's very controlled um, with a brush, um, kind of painting it in. It, well, the brush gets messy and then you have to worry about cleaning those and it's just not as controlled. Just kind of scooping and placing 
and letting it kind of fall off the tool is a very precise and clean way to go about this and make sure you only get the resin in the cells that you want it in. So I'm kind of just using a circular motion to drag and fill this larger cell. On the smaller ones, you can just kind of tap and it'll fill up. Um, just for the sake of you guys at home, I'm gonna slide this off. Hopefully you can kind of see what I'm up to better. And I'll go to war with moving it to the UV lamp on my own. But I'm hoping you can kind of see this a little bit better without that card behind it. So this is basically the process. Um, so it's pretty simple. Um, lots of room for um, really taking this project in whatever direction you would like. I'm gonna go ahead and put the lighter blue in these small cells over here. And I'm just gonna keep on filling cells until all of them are full. So once you've filled all your cells, we're ready to cure the resin. So I'm gonna slide my tape back to my tough card just to make it a little easier for me to move it to my lamp. But I'm gonna put it under my UV lamp and cure it for two to four minutes. So at this point, my resin is fully cured and I'm ready to remove the tape back in here. And um, I'm gonna start with the corner and get it a little bit loose and then flip it completely upside down and then kind of use that loosened corner already for support and pull away to peel. All right. So then here's my um, finished element. There's a, a little bit of, I kind of missed um, up top there, a little bit of excess resin. So I'm gonna take my scalpel and I'm just gonna trim that away. And there's my finished butterfly element. Um, I really love the transparency and these look beautiful hanging from ears um, because uh, especially if your hair is up or something, a lot of light gets to pass through and they just look like little stained glass butterflies that are really lovely. Um, I finished these projects up by putting a jump ring through this top loop, attaching them to a rollo chain and then putting them onto an ear wire. But um, now that you have the resin on this, it's more strong than it would be if it was just silver. It would make a lovely pendant as well. These earrings are a great way to stretch your clay. It took just over one gram to make a pair of butterflies, making these earrings not only super comfortable to wear, but inexpensive to make too. I hope this video inspires you to introduce resin to your practice. Thanks for watching.